Hi folks, this is Glenn Guy, the travel photography guru. Today's presentation is on Harbin in far northeast China. So this is really just an ad hoc um, shoot that I undertook. I had a little bit of free time, wandered around town and made some photographs. And I suppose the dominant elements uh, during January, winter in, um, in China, is going to be ice and snow, so that uh, dominates, as does the colour red. The other dominant elements around Harbin are going to be any architectural elements. It's a city that's had a great deal of influence from Russian immigrants over the years. Uh, the Russians were in Harbin in big, big numbers in the early parts of the century. And, uh, you know, they've left their mark in numerous ways, uh, the architecture being one such way. And there's always opportunities to photograph people moving through the landscape. Because it's cold, you won't see people lingering like you may, you know, on a beach in summer. But you'll see people moving through the landscape. And it's beautiful, isn't it? Um, a horse's head carved out of the ice. The lovely warm colours of the late afternoon sun contrasting with the shaded areas of the ice which are actually reflecting the blue from the sky above. Throughout the shoot I used my Canon 5D Mark II camera and with a single lens, a 24 to 105 millimeter, consistently uh, f4 that lens, so that, that's the maximum aperture regardless of which focal length I'm at on that range of 24 to 105. So for me, it's a, it's a great all-round lens, bearing in mind that I'm using a full frame camera. Most folks with Canon um, and most folks with Nikon cameras, the sensor is somewhat smaller than what's referred to as full frame and there's a magnification factor that occurs so um, the lens actually becomes more powerful than what it uh, would normally be on a film camera or on a full frame digital camera. That increase in magnification of course gives lots of great opportunities when it comes to telephoto photography. Um, in the case of the 105, a 60% increase for most Canon cameras. For most Nikons, it's a 50% increase. So it's coming out about 160 millimeters. So that's a bonus, but you win on the telephoto end, you lose on the wide angle. So with a Nikon, uh, the common Nikons, that is, the 24 mil add 50%, it's now a 36 mil. And the Canon, the maths is just a little bit harder. It's a 60% increase. So it's gonna be, I think from memory, about 38 millimeter instead of 24. So it's very important that we understand this and when we go to buy a lens, an extra lens for our camera, we need to know if the effective focal length, what actually happens to the lens from a magnification point of view when it's put onto our camera. Now this is not an optical magnification, it's really more of a cropping because the small sensor is capturing the image through basically the, the center of the lens, if you like. So uh, not all of the image projected from the lens is captured by the sensor. The sensor is not large enough. So it's commonly referred to as a magnification factor, but because it's not actually an optical property, it's just to do with the smaller sensor, the smaller capturing device on the camera. It's really more accurately referred to as a cropping factor. Now for most of this particular shoot it was bright and sunny although on occasions there was a light um, cloud cover. Now just on the edge of town is a, a very large river which in winter time becomes uh, icebound. So I was um, very keen to get down there and have a walk around and try to make some pictures. And just using the colourful flags really as a bit of an abstract element uh, contrasting the red of the flag with the cool blue of the sky. Someone moving through the landscape as we talked about earlier. Again, um, the colourful flags and in this case notice the colour of the shadows they cast. The shadows are blue because they're reflecting light from the sky. So the sky is actually a light source just as the sun is a light source. But the sky is a light source for the shade and the shade is coloured by the colour of the light source. If the sky is blue, 
your shadows are blue. Interesting. Horse and coach set up for uh, tourists to be driven over the ice. Something a little bit more dramatic. So shooting into the light um, always puts your subject into silhouette. When your subject forms a graphic shape, the silhouette can work very effectively. And you notice that the buildings in the background are um, less pronounced, they're less graphic, and that's really because of the atmospheric haze. But it does add to that sense of three-dimensional space, I think. Uh, I've got a diagonal line, the bridge itself, running through the image, and also a sharper foreground and a hazier background. So that accentuates that sense of depth in the picture. Also, that diagonal line is basically dividing the frame into halves, isn't it? Uh, the lower and bottom half of the image. Graphic nature of the silhouette again, and comparing the, the top structure with the bottom one, which is actually quite a distance off in the background. And you may notice in the middle of the picture, down low in the frame, there's a cyclist actually moving across the icebound river. Same idea, uh, but moving in a bit closer to the bridge and uh, working with the silhouette and the really working more with the shadows, I suppose, cast by these poles in the foreground. As I've mentioned in the last couple presentations, uh, being properly prepared for the cold is very, very important. And uh, I would just add one final point, and that is that I didn't have spiked shoes. But um, next year when I go back in January, I'm going to acquire some spiked shoes because it was very easy for me to move around with my overboots at Ice World and Snow World. No problem. I, I, I don't remember having any problems at all with uh, slippery surfaces there. But moving around the streets of Harbin itself, it was pretty slippery. And, you know, I had to be very, very careful and move slowly. And the problem with moving slowly is it's very hard to stay warm when the temperatures are so cold. So my solution would be to get some spikes for the next trip. But many of you folks from North America or from various parts of Europe got lots of skills for managing it. So the local Chinese people were just walking around in ordinary shoes. But for anyone else with my sort of background, it might be worthwhile bringing some spike shoes along as well. This is a, a lass from uh, the hotel that I stayed at in Harbin and she was um, working in the restaurant uh, as a waitress and um, I asked her if she wanted to show me around the place and uh, I made a couple pictures of her really just to send back to her as keepsakes. Much nicer light in this shot and for those folk that come on the tour with me, you know, I'll definitely give you the tips on how I go about using natural light. Um, I do have the necessary skills to use fill flash in a range of situations, but um, I'll always prefer to work with the natural light. It's actually a lot easier and you can see the light before you make the picture, um, which is of course not what happens with flash. You've got to take the shot then examine the result. A much trickier scene and she looks a bit cold in this shot and that's because she's squeezed up against the ice of course but you know just finding different ways to make pictures of her and uh, she'll no doubt have a laugh um, when she sees this one. So you see the um, European architecture in the image there's lots of that in Harbin it's actually quite a beautiful city. Street vendor with some strange looking hot dog like delicacies and these little things I'm actually not sure what they are but I think the ones in the foreground are a, a kind of meat well it almost looks like it's got that toffee apple um, sticky goo around the outside of it so again this sort of European boulevard quite a prosperous town really the contrast with the young guy, probably a student, uh, busking. Looked like a G chord he was playing there. Here's some more silhouettes, this time of the of people. The good thing about this is, you know, you, you shouldn't feel like you're invading anyone's privacy as long as you don't block their passage. And because they're going to be silhouetted, we're not going to be able to see who they are. So it's they're more iconic, you know, they're shots of people 
moving through the space, not of individuals, because we can't, can't see their faces. The, sh the shadows become important in this, the groupings of the people uh, in twos and threes, etc. That's kind of what binds the whole image together. And I suppose the darkness at the top, sides and bottom of the frame, and our eye moves towards the, uh, the brightness, and that takes us through the picture as well. I prefer this one mainly for the, the colour, you know, my eye goes towards the orange and the red there in the centre. Now this is a pretty grand structure, a Russian Orthodox church, and it's beautiful from the outside, very difficult to photograph. And it's a bit, a bit squeezed because there's a lot of modern architecture all the way around it. When you go inside, however, it's in quite a state of disrepair. It's not used as a church anymore. It's more a museum, but really the museum is just some pictures on the wall and uh, a whole lot of pamphlets, as I remember. So this is not part of the tour to Harbin, but sure, if there's a chance to get out and about, we'll do it. And I just thought it would be worthwhile people seeing what the possibilities might be. So January 2012, 10 days for a maximum of 10 people. Now this is a much more modern structure. Uh, so this is a, a tower and a major tourist attraction for those folks interested in towers. <laughs> I've been up a few over the years and I find them terribly uninteresting, but that's just a personal observation. And that probably has to do with the fact that the ones I've visited are often in heavily polluted cities <laughs> where you really can't get much of a view. And that's pretty much the case here. But it was interesting to get up to the top just to sort of get the lay of the land. But you can see the, the heavy pollution and the haze. And yet, you know, it's interesting to see the way the, the buildings and streets are designed. And you can see that there are some quite lovely buildings in here. So then up on the observation deck, I just walked around 360 degrees and trying to make something interesting of what was there because it was just a pea soup of haze. Uh, looking straight down from the top. And these are images that I normally wouldn't show anyone because they're not. You know, they're a long way from portfolio photos, but they're here just so you can get a, an idea about what's in the town and what the place is like. This isn't a bad one because I've got some warmth in the foreground and some relatively attractive buildings, but now you get the sense of the population, I suppose, because they squeeze a lot of people into um, some of these buildings. So, accommodation, all meals, internal flights, and local transport is all included in the cost. There will be photography theory sessions, practical photography sessions, relating to each place that we visit, and uh, some image processing sessions as well. And that's little old me with a, a funny old uh, hood on my head. Exclusions for the tour, um, international airfares of course, any drinks and snacks that you purchase on the tour and if you decide to arrive prior to the tour and do any travel um, or hang on a few days after the tour finishes, well, any associated costs of course um, would be yours to bear. So you can find me on travelphotographyguru.com, facebook.com forward slash travelphotographyguru now this is one of the sort of surprises that I throw in when I can. It was formerly a Russian restaurant, beautifully decorated, and it's got that real sense of history to it. I just wouldn't suggest you did what I did, which was order from the Western menu, because the food wasn't very good. <laughs> but the Chinese menu, I, I'm led to believe, is actually pretty good. So I hope you've enjoyed that little presentation. The next journey I'll take you on will be in Shanghai and we'll see photography on the Bund by the river and also Nanjing Road, some night photography. So that'll be a bit of fun and I'll get that to you over the next few days. Thanks so much. Bye for now.